lot of you guys do follow me on social media like Facebook I feel like I have different families like I have my Instagram family and then I have like my Facebook family which I feel like I'm the closest with my Facebook family holler to my Facebook family and then I have like my Twitter family and then I have like my YouTube family which is like everybody but if you don't follow me on social media you're missing out because I have been talking about these really cool glasses that I got last fall uh, for my bar. I have a Ouija themed bar in my house, but these have been sitting there like unused. So I'm like, um, I'm just gonna use them for iced coffee. So this one says vampire blood, 100% unfiltered. I actually bought like probably 20 last fall because they were really cheap. It was when they went on clearance. So I used a couple of them for my makeup brushes. So this says, Witch's Brew, drink at your own risk, bottled in Salem, Massachusetts, refrigerate after opening, which is super appropriate for today. This one is Zombie Virus. And this one I used yesterday on social media, which is Poison, deadly when consumed. But they make perfect makeup brush holders too. So everyone's asking, how am I doing in the summer heat of Las Vegas? How do you think I'm doing? I mean, I'm a paranormal investigator. I am like a vampire at heart. I'm already a, you know, night owl. I don't want to be out in that heat. It causes me to melt. And in summer, if you want to wear makeup in Vegas, then you better be indoors all freaking day because your face is going to melt off onto the floor. I think it was like 115, 118 today. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited. Like, I feel like the Ghost Adventures episodes this season have been really good because I'm able to kind of teach you guys things through the review of the Ghost Adventures episode. So that has been so fun for me to do because I love teaching you guys stuff when, I, when I'm like, oh, wait a second. You know, we need to kind of break that apart. So we're going to do that today with the review of Ghost Adventures when they went to Magna, Utah, when they basically helped this family that owned this pizzeria when they were claiming to have demons in the basement at a pizzeria. First of all, what a combo, right? Like, um, I'm a pizza store owner and I have a demonic attachment. Obviously, the family knows what they're doing by being on Ghost Adventures and putting themselves out there. So let's hope the people of Magna are still okay with bringing them business at the pizzeria, even though there's demons in the basement. Magna, Utah, like Zach said, founded 1851 by Mormon pioneers. As of 2010, population of Magna, Utah, 26,000 and the entire town is 7.4 miles. So we're talking everybody knows everybody. So we know it was a copper mining town, um, big into copper mines from 1900s to 1960s. So I found it very interesting when I was researching the store um, that Zach actually went to. It was like the Wicca store called We Witches. I got online just because I thought, you know, there's two things about small towns. Either they embrace things like the occult and witchcraft and paranormal, or they find those people as like super outcasts. So I was like, let's get a feel for what Magna Utah is all about. Shockingly, they have a couple of Wicca stores. 
and it seems to be extremely accepted in Magna, Utah. In fact, they have 49 uh, reviews on like Yelp and Facebook and all that stuff where people have actually voted four stars and above for the, the Wicca stores. So obviously it's extremely accepted in the town of Magna that it just is part of the culture of the occult. Sebastian's the owner, Tina is the wife. They claim there is something that has been trapped in the basement from Tina's former friend that it sounds like used to work for them. I'm not sure if she actually worked at the pizzeria or something else. There was obviously some sort of falling out between Tina and the friend. The friend went into the basement, summoned in not only demons, but I think entities and trapped them there. They've been hanging witch balls and spirit balls, which are something that were created many, many moons ago, basically to attempt to capture souls or spirits or unrested entities and basically remove them from the property. Obviously, those aren't working too well. So when Sebastian's working and if he comes across this energy or entity, he starts sweating, he's twitching, he starts convulsing, he's having all kinds of these weird, um, you know, non-human reactions that you should be having at work, right? Like that's not normal to be twitching while you're trying to work. So wait, let's just rephrase this. Tina is the wife, she's friends with the witch, they have a falling out, the witch gets angry, goes into the basement, summons demons, causes an attachment for Sebastian, and that's where we're at as of right now. Stop, time out for just a minute. Time for Crystal's lessons because one thing Zach said that I have to disagree with, like I love Ghost Adventures, you guys know that I'm like the hardcore Ghost Adventures fan, but I have to disagree with something Zach said, and in order to disagree with him, I have to also educate you guys why I'm disagreeing with Zach. Zach said something in relation to the witch came in and did some sort of witchcraft rituals and or Wicca rituals and caused the demons to be summoned in, blah, blah, blah. Wait a second, no, time out. Sorry, Zach, I respect you, but witchcraft, yes. Wicca, no. This is extremely important to me. I have been wanting to teach you guys this kind of lesson for a while. I've been waiting for the right time for it to come up. This happens to be it. I do have a lot of people that actually follow me that claim to either be witches or Wicca or Wiccans, however you want to pronounce it. I actually have some very close friends in my life um, that are considered witches. As I am educating you guys, I am not going to be using proper lingo of Wicca world or witchcraft world because I feel like we need to use it in some sort of an English manner that we can understand on a very basic level, basic terms. So that is what I'm going to be doing today. So anybody that's out there that is a witch or that practices witchcraft or that is a Wiccan, do not take offense to how I am going to verbalize some of this stuff because if people that are watching, which a majority of my followers, I don't think they study Wicca, I don't think they're gonna understand if I break this apart in like serious, minute terms. So do not be offended by me kind of trying to generalize everything into basic understanding and easier way for us to understand. Luckily, I have some wonderful friends in my life that are witches. They are not Wiccan, they are witches. They are who have educated me on everything that I know that I'm about to share with you guys. For the record, I have been asked this many times before, no, I am not Wicca, no, I am not a witch. I am literally just educating myself. I feel like as a paranormal investigator, you need to know a lot about every realm, like even demonology and psychics and, and in this case, Wicca or witchcraft because if something like this comes across, you're doing a location or an investigation like Zach did, you need to be able to determine, is this Wicca or is this witchcraft? Because there are two distinct differences, and I'm gonna explain that to you guys right now. Okay, one thing that I have to tell you guys, you cannot learn everything about Wicca and witchcraft from books. You have to learn it from people that have studied it for many, many years. And most of the time, those people are not going to put those things in books because they feel like it's a sacred religion, a sacred practice of witchcraft. So that's why I feel so lucky that I can tell you guys literally straight from my friends 
um, and explain to you, you know, bottom to top about Wicca versus witchcraft. First of all, let's break up Hollywood stigma of witches. Wicca versus witchcraft are not the same thing. Wicca is a religion. Witchcraft is a practice of magic or spell work. Two completely different things. Now this is very important. Please listen to this when I say this because this is like the biggest misconception that people get crossing witchcraft and Wicca or Wiccan. And I'm sorry if I'm not using proper terms and sentences. Um, I'm just trying to paint a very visual picture for people that don't know anything about Wicca or witchcraft. Okay, here's the important statement, ready? I'm actually gonna read it verbatim so I don't butcher it. Not all witches are Wiccan, but all Wiccans are witches. Does that make sense? People that study the religion of Wicca or Wiccan are witches. They are witches because that is what Wiccan is. It turns you into spell work and magic practice. But there are different tiers of witchcraft within being a witch. And not all of those tiers are considered Wicca. I will explain this, I will explain this. This is why I dispute and disagree with what Zach said when he says this bad witch is in the basement doing some sort of witchcraft or Wicca rituals. No, that's not true because a true Wiccan would not be in the basement of a location doing bad or evil spell work. That is not the definition of a Wicca or a Wiccan person. So what does that mean? We've got to break these terms down, okay? A Wicca or a Wiccan, which is a religious-based study, is considered modern paganism or pre-Christianity religion. It was developed in England. It was brought to the United States when the first British settlers came here. The religion of Wicca or Wiccan evolves and grows constantly. So it's always changing. Um, I'm assuming it's like with the times of technology, right? Like as time progresses, the religion of Wicca or Wiccan progresses itself. They have normal traditions just like any other religion. They worship the sun and the moon, which is the god and the goddess to them. They worship more than one god and goddess. It depends on the season. It depends on... Um, if it's raining outside, if there's a storm, if there is um, a sunny you know, time of year, um, the moon phases are a really big deal. Wiccans celebrate the cycles of the moon. So all the way from crescent moon to full moon. They celebrate the cycles of the sun, the cycles of the sea, the cycles of the ocean, the cycles of the seasons, animals, herbs, nature. They actually, Wiccans, most Wiccans, I'm not saying all, they don't like the word witchcraft because sadly it's been so associated with all of the dark crap we see in Hollywood. And we see it again with Zach's show, I'm sorry, but he said they're doing some sort of Wicca spell work. No, they're not. Wiccas don't believe in hurting people or um, damaging um, you know, people's reputations or their lives or summoning demons, that is not a Wicca. So what they were doing in the basement, summoning these demons in, that is not considered a Wicca tradition. Wiccans do not like the word witchcraft. They prefer the words spell work. This is where being a Wiccan or a Wicca, because they do spell work, it starts getting confused with things like Satanism. Um, I think I'm pronouncing this right, it's called Luciferianism. I might have said that wrong. I might have butchered the crap out of that, but. And it also gets confused with black magic. What do Wiccans do spell work regarding? You know, why do they do witchcraft? Why, what are they doing when they're doing witchcraft? So it involves basically summoning a circle that's, co that's considered a protective circle around them. They do spells with like pro-life fertility issues. If someone's having a fertility issue in their family or if someone comes to them asking for help because of fertility issues, the sun and the moon spells. Um, life force manifestations. I want to bring positive energy into my life. I want um, you know, to get that phone call regarding that job I'm really interested in. They do nature spells, rain spells, sun spells, flower spells, 
anything outdoors, anything involving the elements. They do being kind spells, banishing negativity. So wait a second, did you hear what I just said? Wiccas do spells banishing negativity. So that is definitely not the same as summoning in a demon. They use things like candles, elements, fire, earth, water, wind. They use east, west, north, south, the gods, the goddesses, the oceans, the water, sea salt, healing, purification processes, casting protection circles around themselves so that when they're doing meditation or spell work, they are protected from darkness. They ask the gods and the goddesses to help aid them in whatever they're doing with their spell work. Now, when they're doing things like spell work, they can have something called an altar, and that's where they can kind of worship the gods and the goddesses, the sun, the moon. They do use things like broomsticks, cauldrons, chalices, wands, candles, incense, magical tools, herbs, salts. I could keep going on and on. So what is the point of this? Wiccas or Wiccans, yes, they do practice spell work, but they do not practice anything dark at all. But because they have these magical rituals where they're summoning a protective circle and using herbs and all this stuff, that's where it starts getting confused with things like satanic rituals and black magic. Two differences, pentagram versus inverted pentagram. <laughs> pentagram means Wicca, Wiccan. Inverted pentagram, bad, not good. Um, satanic worships, big differences. One is straight up and down, which is a normal pentagram, which is for the gods and goddesses. The other one is inverted, which is the antichrist. Basically, it's the complete opposite in worship of not your god, I am in worship of the devil of Satan. So big differences in pentagrams. Keep your eye on that. If you see them on the walls when you're investigating, figure out which way's up and which way's down. Why do Wiccans and Wiccas not, or Pagan, whatever you wanna, you can title any of those. Why do they not believe in doing harm to people? They have something called the threefold law or you could consider it, I mean, it, it's kind of a law or a rule, whatever you wanna call it, a law versus a rule. The threefold law. As a Wiccan, you will never do harm to anyone or anything. And if you do do harm to someone using your spellcraft or magic work, three times it will come back to you in a negative manner. So let's say a Wiccan person decides out of nowhere they're going to cast a spell on somebody. Let's say they cast a spell that they hope that they get sick and ill. I don't know, I'm just giving you an example. First of all, you can't actually set a spell on someone that hasn't done something to you first. Does that make sense? So it kind of goes into hoodoo voodoo, which is if someone does something bad to you. So let's say, um, someone got in the middle of your friendship and caused that friendship to fizzle. Now that person as a witch can cast a spell on that person, but this is not Wicca either because once again, the first rule is you will not do harm to others. So that's not technically considered Wiccan, that's just considered witchcraft. But if a Wicca does perform a negative or dark um, spell on someone, it will come back to them three times. So it's basically like karma hitting them three times. So that day or week, they might drop their coffee on themselves and burn themselves with the heat. They might um, have someone ran a stop sign and almost hit their car and it caused them um, to have a heart attack or they could trip and fall and break their toe unexpectedly. So that is what Wiccans and Wiccas believe. This is exactly why a Wicca would not have gone down into the basement to perform something like summoning in a demon and controlling it. So here we're gonna talk about the levels of witchcraft, not Wicca. Okay, so we have determined basically Wiccas or Wiccans do not do harm to other people. So that could not have been the kind of person that came into the basement to summon a demon. There are white witches, green witches, gray witches, black witches. There's a bunch of other witches in between, but let's kind of explain the basics of this. White witch is basically what a Wiccan or a Wicca person is. They actually don't like to be categorized as a white witch most of the time, and that's because um, they don't want to have to explain themselves. If they come up to somebody and say, oh, I do witchcraft, oh, but I'm a white witch, it's okay. They feel like maybe they should just go back into hiding if you have to 
announce yourself that way. In other words, they don't want people to be in fear of them if they're just saying they do witchcraft. Saying you do witchcraft doesn't automatically mean that you're doing Satanism, completely different things. But for the sake of this discussion, even though Wiccas do not like being called white witches, we're gonna say most Wiccas or Wiccans are white witches. A green witch is someone that can also be Wicca. They basically um, do spells with nature or herb related spells and even animals. So um, it's all good spells like, oh, you know, we're gonna do a spell to perform um, to have this habitat where the animals are living, um, you know, grow more greenery so that it can help the ecosystem, you know, things like that. That's what a green witch would do. A gray witch is when you're going to start getting into the zone of you're not really a Wiccan if you're considering yourself a gray witch. So a gray witch is someone that actually believes in karma, basically. So if someone does something bad to them, they are gonna do something bad back, but they will only do it in that instance. So um, if someone, let's say, I don't know, let's get really juvenile for a second and say somebody steals someone's boyfriend. This, this new girl moved into town and she stole my boyfriend and she didn't know I was a witch. Now as a witch, I can put a spell on her or cast a spell towards her um, because I'm mad at her that she stole my boyfriend. So that's kind of the gray witch zone. Once again, a Wicca or a Wiccan would not do that because they don't believe in harming anyone else or anything else. A black witch, which uh, honestly, if you even talk to Wiccans, they don't even like to consider a black witch the dark side because they feel like if someone is truly practicing black magic or you know any something related to Satan or Lucifer, they don't even want their title of their name in witch. Um, and that's just because they think it's horrible what they're doing. You know, they're usually um, some sort of animal sacrifices involved or um, gore, basically. So they're, they try to keep the stigma of witch, generally speaking, is a good thing. And anyone else doing anything bad, they don't want their title to be witch at all. Now that's interesting if you step back and think about it for a minute because anything we've ever seen in Hollywood or even in this case with Zach when we were listening to the story, they were actually confusing witch or Wiccan with you know witchcraft. And it's interesting if you talk to actual witches, they don't want to be associated with anything dark. So very interesting stigma considering Hollywood has butchered the crap out of, of witches, which is kind of sad because generally speaking, it's considered a good thing. So when you meet real witches, whether they are Wiccan or not, they usually absolutely hate books um, that are wrote on the craft or on Wicca because sometimes they are not accurate. And it's one of those things that really needs to be taught either Oh, in like a coven or by an oracle, meaning someone that has been studying or practicing it for a very long time, or, you know, go belong to a meetup group or an actual Wicca church. Black witch is always associated with satanic rituals, black magic, anything dark, like what we saw with Magna Utah. This is interesting how it kind of correlates with the skinwalker because in order to get to the level of a black witch, basically, you could have studied Wicca in the beginning and then learned the craft of witchcraft or a white witch. And then eventually it's much like the skinwalker, which is the medicine man in that case, where they realize their powers are so strong, they use it for evil. And in this case for Wicca, it goes Wiccan, white witch, maybe gray witch, and then suddenly they turn into a black witch where they're realizing they can use their powers for evil. Okay, so I am going to start getting into a discussion of a dark witch or a black witch, and that's because that's what we're seeing on, on Ghost Adventures, right? That's what we saw with this location. If you're not comfortable listening about demonology or hoodoo, voodoo, or any of that stuff, I am not going to go into super detailed um, you know, discussions about any of this, but I am going to talk briefly about this so you as investigators understand if you're going into a location like Zach did, you will know the red flags to look for and what you're dealing with in that case. Magic practice of a dark witch, or you, you might as well just say demonology, 
And when I'm saying practicing demonology, I'm not talking Ed and Lorraine Warren where they, um, you know, practice so they could help people. When you're talking about the practice and study of magic and demonology, we're talking about being able to summon in demons and control and power them so that you can harm people or animals or things. Magic practice of demonology is 10% preparation, 90% manifestation. You can't just be a black witch. You would have had to craft your part doing witchcraft in Wicca or in as a white witch in order to understand you can even manipulate things as a dark witch. The way black magic or you know Satanism is um, presented to you is basically if you summon in the darkness and demons it will help your everyday life and give you more power than you've ever known and that is what hooks people apparently when people start doing this craft of black magic and they realize it starts to work and it helps certain aspects of their life eventually it's going to encompass your entire life with darkness right it's basically like something tiny, um, some small blackness creeping into a, a nicely lit room and before you know it, you're sitting in an entire dark room because it just slowly envelops you. Um, and, and my assumption is that if you're surrounding yourself with dark things and you're summoning in dark things, of course it's going to make you want to harm others because you're surrounding yourself by demons and darkness. This is where it starts to tie in slightly with hoodoo and voodoo. So when you're doing um, a ritual for black magic or it, you know being in satanic rituals, you're going to be using things like animal and human blood, um, animals and animal parts for sacrifice. Sometimes you'll even hear of human sacrifices. I know most of you guys have seen shows where they say, oh, there was a Satan group that um, took this person that was pregnant and um, they killed her and killed her newborn baby. Yeah, that's because having a newborn baby or an unborn child is considered the most pure process of birth. So for a satanic group to take that purification and kill it is basically the ultimate sacrifice to Lucifer. Going back to ingredients, um, basically when you're a black witch, you are reaching the highest level of summoning demons and that which considers themselves not only living, you know, here on earth and the physical world, but they literally consider themselves to be living in between dimensions of this place and is that considered hell? Wherever demons are, I don't know. What do these black witches do? They summon and control demons to hurt people or hurt things. Um, they consider Lucifer is their god. Eventually, the black magic will turn into, you know, satanic rituals. There's basically different levels of it, which I will go over soon. But eventually, the black witch will learn all of the demon abilities. So there's many demons you can actually learn in demonology. And you have to know which demon to summon. You have to know which demons cause pain, um, who they can possess or what demons can possess things. You have to memorize the rituals for this um, purpose of demonology practice. That considers moon phases, candles, ingredients, invoking, and um, creating spiritual warfare. It's basically creating chaos between the physical world and and the demons that are being summoned. So here's the levels of, of a black witch. Beginner is black magic. Wow, that's the beginner. Beginner black magic, there's intermediate black magic, there's advanced black magic. Then you get into um, Luciferanism. I don't know if I said that right, I think it's right. And then the, the last step, the ultimate black witch is um, satanic rituals and satanism. So this is interesting when you're, you're starting to talk about there's hands around the daughter's neck inside of this pizzeria. Um, the son is six years old that's saying that he sees dead people, like from the sixth sense. And then oddly, Zach is sitting with the kid in the booth and he's so awkward like around the kid. And suddenly I'm like, that is totally like, you know, that scene from the sixth sense where they're like, Bruce Willis is discussing with this kid what he's seeing. It was like a modern day Sixth Sense episode. Once again, we're seeing demonic mimicking, which is this little girl that's coming out of nowhere that's scaring this poor little six-year-old kid 
if I'm a parent, I'm just saying, I'm not gonna let my kid be around some creepy demon house. So they're claiming that this entity or entities have been trapped in the basement. Um, this demon, the main one, has been um, kind of attached to the main owner, which is really scary. They've summoned in demons, and then a good witch has come in, and she has um, tried to help this family, and she kind of became punished by the bad witch by a spider going in her hair, you know, basically creating some sort of a hex and, and damaging the good witch. Why is the demon creating pain for the man like he's sweating and he's having like he's sweating and he's like what they say he was shaking sometimes because that is stirring up energy and we know as paranormal investigators if an entity is wanting to stir up energy in the atmosphere it's going to make you move or shake or scream so that energy emits EMF levels so that they can use those to communicate and possibly even manifest. Much like when Zach and them were in the basement and it looked like the whole building shook and Jay could feel it from a building over, of course these energies wanted to scare them because then they jumped and screamed and Billy's running all over because that's emitting EMFs. It's emitting energy so that these energies can use it to manifest and talk to them and perhaps even hurt them in the process. Let's just say for one minute, um, I don't blame Billy for not wanting to lay on that mattress because there could have been herfagana syphilates on it. And oh my God, I felt so bad for Billy. For a minute, it looked like he was gonna actually lay on the bed and I was like, no, mm -mm, you can demote me. Like, you can go ahead and knock down my salary, Zach, because I am not sitting on that mattress, mm -mm, no. And then what was with the master Satan thing come in through the like, was it the ovulus or was it a paranormal puck? I can't remember. Master Satan? I never said I wanted to talk to Master Satan. I'm fine if Master Splinter comes through, but I do not want to talk to Master Satan. Mm -mm, no, nope. tell him I'm not home. I gotta fold my sheets. I forgot to make my bed at the hotel before I left, so I'll be back in like 10 minutes because uh, Master Satan's here and he wants to talk to all y'all because I didn't ask to talk to him, so uh, I gotta go fold my sheets. I wish they were wearing heart rate monitors. Come on, Ghost Adventures, bring back the heart rate monitors. That's just more proof for you guys when you're running and jumping and you're getting scared that we can see physical evidence and data being collected from a scientific point of view. We want to see that, Gak, please. So now we did end with this like cleansing ritual. Um, Zach's trying to go through and rid the house. I think he was using sage and something else. I thought it was really nice that he attempted that, but I did talk to my friends that do perform witchcraft and they said, in a case like that where a bad witch has actually come in and summoned in demons, the only way to get that out, they're gonna either need a witch that previously, um, you know, did spell work in summoning in demons, or they're gonna need a coven, which is many witches, to come in and do many cleanses or basically reversal spells to close those portals or close whatever has been attached or opened in that basement in order to rid them of it. I know I sound a little bit like Amy Allen right now because I'm like, you need a black witch or a coven to come in there and cleanse everything and close the portals and I know that sounds a little unrealistic but I'm being kinda serious too. Like, that's really the only way to get this closed or get this removed is have someone come in that knows how it first is opened and then knows how it can be shut. Even if it's a coven of good witches going in, obviously they're gonna need the strength of more than one because this one girl was affected. I just wanna remind you guys, like even my, my friends that are witches, cause I don't know anything about witchcraft other than what I told you guys. One thing that my friends said to me that do practice witchcraft, they said if they can get this done properly with good witches or white witches or a coven of good witches, they said that good always prevails over evil. And that just like, I don't know, that kind of made my day, I guess. Like, you like to hear the good side of things. I thought the episode of Ghost Adventures was phenomenal. I thought it was great. Um, I just wanted to get it clear that Wicca and witchcraft are two completely different things. I absolutely do not endorse or support Satanism, Luth Luciferanism, whatever it is, 
um, black magic, hoodoo voodoo, that stuff is not only horribly dangerous and can go wrong if you don't know what you're doing, but second of all, I, I am the biggest um, person against and disagreeance of people harming animals or things and uh, my empath abilities kick in and I feel physically sick when I hear, you know, there was like a dark witch that was doing like satanic work or or something bad because I don't I don't get at all why a person and I'm not talking a religion. Let's let's get rid of Wicca and Christianity and whatever other religions you want to add into it. And let's get rid of witchcraft. Let's get rid of all of the belief systems and let's just talk about being a human and what it's like to be a human and a good human at least, a decent human being. And a decent human being would not want to hurt or harm or cause pain or death to an animal or a person. So that is why I am so in disagreement of anything that comes with darkness. Like animal sacrifices are freaking disgusting, man. Like people that are a part of that, it just makes me sick that they would ever want to hurt an animal. These groups that are out there that claim they like kidnap people or homeless people or cut out, you know, unborn children, the whole thing is disgusting. And I don't even know why people, not as a witch or as a religious person just as a human being would want to do something like that to another living being when that being did not do anything wrong even if it's out of vengeance that is not right it is not the human thing to do so it makes me sad I will say analyzing this entire episode of ghost adventures if this bad witch did put this curse or ritual on this family or their business it worked, obviously we know that it worked, but in order for it to work as deeply as it has, I do have to say from the witchcraft perspective, the family had to have done something to this woman first. I'm not saying that that makes it right. I'm not saying that whatever they did, maybe they fired her and she got angry and she took out a vengeance on the family by summoning in this demon or something else. I'm not saying that makes it right. But what I am saying is, that it's kind of that bipartisanship of like equal, equal, you know, equal versus equal, basically. Like they did something bad to me first, so I get to do something bad back to them. And that's why whatever has happened, you know, has made it this bad. The family's gotta smudge constantly, you gotta have cleansings constantly. I told you guys in my past video, if you're cleansing your house or cleansing somebody else's house, you have to make the people that live there or own it, be involved. They have to say it with their gut. No, I don't want you here. No, you're not welcome here. If they aren't a part of the cleansing process, it's not gonna work, guys, because they have to have the words come out of their mouth. It's their house, it's their business, and if they're letting somebody live there for rent free and they're not telling them to get out, well, you can only do so much as an investigator to help people. You have to make sure people want to help themselves first. And if they're not willing to help themselves, sometimes, unfortunately, in a case like this, there's nothing you can do about it. And I know it's hard as a human, as a paranormal investigator, we want to help people, we want to help them rid their homes and businesses of these things. But if the owners don't want to come in and be a part of it, and they are letting these entities, or demons in this case, live there, be a part of their life, make them sick, choke them around the neck, they're allowing that to happen. I've told you guys, it's like if a neighbor were to stroll in your house, even if the door was locked and they strolled right on in and sat on your couch, started eating all your food, what would you say? I'd be like, excuse me, you can get the F out now. It's the same as a ghost. It's the same as a demon as an entity. You can't let it sit there. You're a part of the problem if you're not gonna be a part of the solution. And please, let's get it clear. All witches are not Wicca because Wicca is not a bad thing. White witches are not a bad thing. Green witches are not a bad thing. Summoning demons, knowing demonology, causing people pain and harm and death and animals pain and harm and death, that is dark stuff and it should never be associated with Wicca. We need to know our facts as paranormal investigators or we're not gonna do a very good job helping people when we're doing investigations. Make sure you get the facts straight. Witchcraft 
is not always Wicca. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. Make sure you give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you guys follow me on social media. I am thinking maybe next week I'll do a Facebook live video or a YouTube live video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What do you guys think about my video? Do you think that I'm pretty accurate when I'm trying to distinguish Hollywood's version of witchcraft versus what it really is as investigators. Tomorrow I will have a video up about the Nick Groff slash um, Jason Hawes discussion. Everyone's dying to hear what I have to say about that. I will have that video up tomorrow night during Ghost Adventures as always and I will catch you guys next time. Back for the